United States of America is the most successful nation the world has ever known. I think that's largely because we're the freest nation. Humans cannot reach their potential, cannot realize their dreams unless they're free. If prosperity were easy, everybody around the world would be prosperous. If freedom were easy, everybody around the world would be free. If security were easy, everybody around the world would be secure. They are not. None of this is going to be easy. But this is the United States of America. It takes an extraordinary effort. It takes extraordinary commitment. It takes extraordinary strength. The Valley Forge wasn't easy. Going to the moon wasn't easy. Settling the West wasn't easy. We are the American people. We have seen difficulties before and we always overcome them. This is about rolling up our sleeves. We and I have some differences, but at Americans putting our head down and getting it done. Welcome to, oh, there we go. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is Tuesday, October 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are live from the many uh, reaches of the United States of America. Happy to have you with us. For all of the new people that um, are joining since yesterday, welcome. Welcome to our family. Uh, we had a terrific interview with President Donald Trump yesterday. Uh, you know, it's funny. We still call him just president. I mean, I know some people might say former, but you know, we that's his name. He's his name isn't president. Donald J. Trump anymore. Yeah, his name isn't Donald J. It's President Donald J. Trump. That's his He's name. He's still my president. <laughs> legally. Let me, let, legally, exactly. Let me introduce the Godfather of Conservative Radio, Mr. Hutch Bailey Jr. Hello, fellas. Glad to be here uh, in the United States of America. And Mr. J.R. Robinson from Muslim Soda. Hey, 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 top of the morning, everybody. Before we get into today's madness, make sure you take a sec, do a like, do a comment, do a share. That's how we beat the big tech algorithm. We appreciate it. That's right. We are broadcasting on Red Voice Media, redvoicemedianetwork.com. Check them out. You can go to, again, uh, redvoicemedia.com. Click on the subscribe button. You can get, uh, well, with it's a 24-7 network. They are streaming on Apple now. They're streaming on Roku. They're streaming on Amazon Prime. Uh, I you heard of the Blaze? You heard of OAN? You heard of that other network that I will not uh, mention because they didn't pay me for a year and a half, and I will not go on that network. Uh, you remember that Hutch? They didn't pay us for a year and a half. I do had all that equipment out there trying to tease us. Mm -hmm. Kept 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 trying to say. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got to turn on the ad machine, but y'all get paid. We didn't get paid yeah. mm -mm. for a whole we year. year. We were doing we got a year free. Five five shows a, 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 a week for a month, every month. We didn't get we didn't get paid. They lied to us, Hutch. They lied to us. They did. Somebody and, was and, getting paid though. Yeah, yeah. Uh one America. Or I don't even remember that. America's name. voice. That's what it is. America's voice. Yeah. Yeah, they and, and and they had a lineup too. They they had um, they had Dominic Silk and they had uh, they had a whole lot of big names at the beginning. And those people just said, you know what? No, <laughs> no, mm -mm. yeah. So that's right. I'm talking about it because I can't. Um, but no, we uh, we had President Trump on yesterday. He what an awesome job. Pe people were still talking about it last night when they were sharing it. Uh, oh, redvoicemedia.com. 
Uh, you can also check them out on their Rumble channel too, rumble.com forward slash. I know there's a C in there, but you don't need to see. Just type in Red Voice Media and it'll go right to their their um, their uh, their page. They're doing a wonderful job there, and we're trying to match them by doing a wonderful job here for them. Uh, what's your, what, what, what's your, um, before we even get into it, what's on y'all's plate? Are y'all seeing anything weird happening today, this morning? Seems like there's a trend. Uh, we, we've noticed all these disasters going on all over the place, and a lot of them were arson. And it seems Is like it really? people, are, people are starting to put the dots together. I mean, I've even seen <clears throat> videos of people being caught, you know, lighting these fires. They're trying to blame it all on climate change for the World Economic Forum across mm. the whole world. I mean, in, in all kinds of different countries. Greece, Greece just busted about 30 people for arson. The only place they're not busting them is here, mm. you know, but I mean, literally using helicopters to start forest fires. It's crazy. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, today kind of reminds me of the analogy we use back where I come from called dogs not barking which means it's eerily quiet and you know there's activity going on. I mean, there's stuff leaking out about from uh, Obama's chef. The police report yeah. got leaked out. Turned out he was naked when they found him. That's kind of weird. Uh, the Maui <laughs> stuff, videos are leaking out from citizens. That's all pretty weird. Uh, you know, you've got Joe Biden. I'm becoming more convinced by the day that his I'm not going to run for re-election is going to be announced any day now. I mean, he's essentially quiet quit. Uh, like he's either taking vacation or just kind of taking up space. So it's uh, it's interesting because it's like, boy, if you you look at the stories that really should be dominating the news cycle, there there's remarkably little that the mainstream media is actually covering. You know, I was gonna um I was gonna say something about that. Well, actually I saw the headline and then you know I was like, oh whatever. Um and then I just turned away from it about the naked thing for his uh um uh chef. Chef. I go back to a lot of the stars in the fifties and sixties that were found suicide, that were found in their bed naked. And I never understood that. I never understood that. It, it's like, I mean, you know, I, I know people, like Marilyn Monroe was found naked. Uh, there was a uh, there was a black uh, singer uh, who was the, basically almost the opposite of Marilyn Monroe, but she wasn't. Uh, very popular. Uh, she was in some great movies back then. Found naked, and it's like, was that a sign? Was that some type of uh, you know cultish type of thing? It just and when I saw this, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I, I mean, Hollywood, Hollywood, and 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 the government, you know, they. They play some weird games up there, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, you know with, that, with that with that Operation Mockingbird, and you know, you're now finding all the uh, all the sleazy, perverted things that are coming out of Hollywood. I mean, we kind of knew it in the background, but with this trans movement and this Disney getting outed, it's like really there, man. These people are sick. I hope they go bankrupt. We don't need them. Well, yeah, and like the the chef story, you know, it came out. First story was the guy drowned paddle boarding and he was alone at the residence. Nobody was there. And then all of a sudden, and they said, oh, he couldn't swim. Then all of a sudden people found videos of him swimming really well in a pool. Okay. So we got to change that story. And then it turns out there, the Obamas were in town and then it turned out, it sounds like their kids were in town. And then it turns out the water he drowned in was like three or four feet deep. The police report we were waiting on, the 911 call, because all that's public information. You can get all that for most, like that one call is missing for the 911 call. So just the whole thing, you know, and, and you don't want to instantly throw on your tinfoil hat and be conspiratorial, but the government has lied so many times to the American people at some point when it's like, well, why is none of this stuff adding up that that that's when. You know, you don't want to go like, okay, what really happened? But, I mean, 
It's kind of like I when start- they were talking about pedophile and then pedophilia and Hollywood being corrupt and powerful people. And then Jeffrey Epstein came out and all of a sudden everybody's like, Oh, huh, I, I guess it's real. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I stopped being, a um, I stopped being that investigator a long time ago. Cause I was like, man, that, this stuff is not journalists, just investigator stuff. Cause I was like, man, these people are, are distracting for, um, um, because they're doing something else with this That's stuff. Right. And it's so obvious. We're talking about UFOs yeah. the other day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like I mean, the same exact story I heard when I was 20. Yeah, they're getting ready to, I mean, I can't believe it, but I think that the Senate is getting ready to do, oh, talking about the Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have Tommy Tuberville uh, um, week after next. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. What he, a patriot. Uh, he contacted yeah. us. <laughs> he contacted us. We were like, trying to get on your show. Like, hey, come on in, brother. <laughs> we look, look, we love Tommy. Tom, Tommy, wait, where do you hear that show? Where do you see some of the people he's blocking? I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. The military. This guy's doing God's work. Yeah, Hunch, yeah. You should explain what he's doing right now. Well, what what it is in the military? Anyone? I think it's 06. After you make full bird colonel, any promotion after that has to be confirmed by the Senate. All services, all so anybody who's going to join the ranks of general officers or admirals has to be approved by the Senate. And and Senator Tuberville is on the committee that does that. And for decades, they just rubber stamp this. Whatever comes through the list, they, they okay, yes, 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 yes. Everybody gets promoted. It's like a, a formality. Well, Tommy Tuberville had a problem with the abortions being funded by DOD. So he said, oh, really? Well, you're not getting any more promotions till you kill that abortion funding. And they said, well, no, we're not killing it. And for like a year, nobody's gotten promoted to general. It's, it's lovely. But then after that, as an afterthought, he started, the list started getting bigger of people that were waiting promotion. And he started looking at the details. Human garbage, ladies and gentlemen. These people that are being promoted to the highest ranks of our United States military are woke, stupid. Three quarters of them are women. Um, and and we already know uh, from uh, the colonel that was on here the other day. I can't remember his name. McGregor. Uh, colonel McGregor, Douglas McGregor, told us during World War II at the height of operations, 12 million people under arms, seven four-star generals. And now we have just a, a bushel full of them. Yeah, There's like 140 or something. Yeah, stupid. it's ridiculous. Yeah. So good, good for the senator. Yeah, well, um, and it just shows too when we talk about the people we elect, we want them to go take action. Here's a new senator who just got in, who's just using his legislative powers to, you know, say, "Hey, I'm not giving to in." Do his duty. To do his duty, right? Yeah. No, um, I I'll go back to um, that found dead naked thing. David Curdy, Kung Fu was found dead. Really. Uh, yeah, he was naked. He, um, he was hung. Well, suicide hung type of thing in his room. Um, I, I mean, I, I, it's just a, you know, I mean, I know people sleep in their body, uh, birthday suits and stuff, but it was just something that just, I don't know. There was another one that. Uh, yeah, the dude that ran against DeSantis. <laughs> <laughs> in the bathroom, naked on the floor. You know, uh, I, I, again, it's it's like we it's, it's just weird. <laughs> it's like it's like it's I didn't weird. realize there was so many, so many perverts in this country. Right? Do you know that this this human trafficking thing, this sound of freedom that sparked this whole uh, awareness? All of the, uh, the the biggest customer of that stuff is the United States. Yes, yeah. by yeah. far. Oh, yeah. we need God back. You know what? Well, yes, we do, and that's and that's why that's why, ladies and gentlemen. That's why this country ain't got no money, because a whole lot of the people up there are spending all that money for all this trafficking and stuff. You know, I mean, somebody's getting rich off of this, and is it ain't the people up top? It's probably the cartels. Yeah, Colombia. You know what's really Asian, sad too? Asian. What's really sad is you'd think that the whole country could unite and say like child trafficking's bad, we should stop it. You would think. There's so many, you know, that's the other thing about Hollywood and about uh, the government and things. 
Why aren't they going against it? Why aren't they standing against child trafficking? Right. Why aren't they standing against genital mutilation of children? Are we that bad? Or is there just us three? I mean, we're, where is everybody? And at some point, don't you think, I kind of wonder like, am I the crazy one? Am I the one who, who's way off saying the government, if we're going to spend resources on stuff, let's shut down trafficking this mutilation of children. And I mean, there was a video floating around Twitter yesterday about this young boy that they chemically castrated uh, at eight years old what? because for a while he thought he was a girl what? and they're covering it. Like it's some great thing. It's like, at eight years old, my kid thought he was a Pokemon, but I'm not going to get a tail sewn on him. You know why are no, we? He why should are we be freaking arrested? Thing? People like that ought to be in prison. Yeah, whoever, right? whoever protect whoever. protect. I saw a, a pizza shop that had protect ch- trans children in it. Yeah, you protect trans children. Arrest their freaking parents. Right. Yeah, whoever whoever came up with the idea that the children can make up their mind under the ages of 15 or 16, uh, <clears throat> that person needs to be locked up in a cell in gym pop uh, yep. uh, because we don't, I'm not, well, huh? no, as a parent, you are really looking out for your kid. Well, most parents should be looking out for your kid between those ages. You know, my father used to overheard my father telling somebody, my father was a pastor, um, also a social worker uh, while he was alive. And I overheard him saying, the uh the ages where parents really have uh their work cut out to teach the child what they should be is between ages of of, of five I mean four and twelve or four and eleven four and twelve or something like that after that you know that's it. I mean kids it's true you know you really can't really teach I mean you can tell them things but you can't teach them. And 13 is where I went off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're a teen now. You yeah. know, you know everything. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I remember my parents, my, my father worked at the University of Pittsburgh. My mother worked at Carnegie Mellon University. And I remember them telling me I could go to school for free. You know, all I had to do was pay for books. And I told my parents, why the hell would I do that when I can be a laborer right now? I'm going <laughs> to go hang some drywall. I know what I'm doing. My uneducated butt. <laughs> You're in the army now. You're not behind the plow. <laughs> I was going to say, when I was young, I discovered what alcohol was in a small town at a young age. <laughs> that'll do it. That'll yeah, do it. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. You know, um, I labeled the show this because of something that we were talking about yesterday. And I don't want to, I mean, I want to, I want to strike a match under some people. If you're young, I really want to strike a match under y'all's butts. I really do. Somebody said yesterday, why don't y'all run? Because we're doing the podcast. No, no, no I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding, y'all. Um, war, war, well, war is for the young right now. I mean, I mean you know, uh, I give, I give you all the resources that I can. We've been out there. I'll say that. We have, we, we have literally been out there. So, but uh, somebody came up with a good idea the other day. Look, uh, serving in Congress is a privilege. It shouldn't be um, a lifetime certificate type of deal where, you know, it shouldn't be a lifetime thing. You should, every person that's serving should only get one term. That's what this person said. Now, I've been saying two terms. But you know what? Maybe they should just get one term. You wouldn't have sure. to worry about so much campaigning all the time. Right. Right. Maybe they should just get one term. Maybe ex- maybe extend the term. Make it three years or four years and one one and done. For the House? Yeah. Yeah, but keep it at six for the Senate. They don't need seven or eight. No, I was going to drop them down to four. <laughs> or, you know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Four, four years both. That's Why should it. the Senate be in there longer than the president? That's true too. That's probably that's probably di- diabolically. Uh, uh, well, to to answer that question, if you go back in the Federalist Papers, they actually specifically structured it like that, where 
the Senate was supposed to be the very deliberative body that moved like a turtle and they were supposed to be the gatekeeper. The House would more follow passions of the populace. And that's why like you could have a the concept was you could have a strong movement that comes up and it takes over the country this year. But you've still got the Senate that only a third changes every two years. So that 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 was designed to be your goalkeeper. Like, okay, let's not do anything crazy, folks. So you actually had to be five years older to be in the Senate than in the House. Right. And if I remember correctly, the senators were selected by the state legislature. That is correct. That's the biggest mistake we ever made. With our yeah, may, yeah, maybe we need to go back to that. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes a constitutional amendment. That's how they changed it. Yeah. Yep. Either way, either, um, you know, we, there's some changes that need to be done with um, within the government because there are no more protests and I, this is where I'm, this is where I was going there's no more protests of, of our government and the protests for against our government is really covered in the constitution uh yep. it's covered you are covered you're covered basically protesting uh a government that um, is tyrannical uh, that it that that goes away from the constitution uh, that that turns on the american people you can protest it according to the constitution. That's your right. That's what is different from and 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 what's what's really crazy is that you look overseas, they don't have the that constitution, and they're protesting their government. They're protesting everybody, everything need everybody needs to understand what the Democrats have done. Yeah. And not just the Democrats. I mean, I remember you know, Ted Cruz called us terrorists too. Right. You know, a whole bunch of them did. And what they did is they turned the Constitution on its head. Nobody's going to walk into Washington, D.C., where every five inches there's a camera with facial recognition software in it that they tell you they have. And you see the hundreds of people that are locked up in political prisons. I mean, they don't even have charges on them, some of them. Yeah. You know, they, some of them don't have lawyers. They've been in there two and a half years. Who's going to go to Washington? It's, 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 almost, it's almost game time. Somebody well, said um, that they aren't even that they're not even being charged as insurrectionists. Right. Check what? that out again. They're not being charged as insurrectionists, but they're trying to put an insurrectionist label on Donald Trump. And and think about this. Think about this. Where are the politicians that we elected? Where are the Republicans? Where are they? You got to understand this. This is a this is a rigged game, and it's against us. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what else to say about that. I mean, what I, did, um, what did, um, did y'all hear what, uh, Jim Jordan, you know, what Jim Jordan is basically, uh, coming up with that they're getting close yeah. to the idea of an investigation, uh, a possible, a possible, no, the investigation of a possible by impeachment. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Democrats just go and do it. Republicans have to check in with their mamas. And that's how you can tell it's phony. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nobody, I mean, Kevin McCarthy got elected speaker partly because he said he would release those tapes. Where are the tapes? Yeah. Uh, never going to be released. Right. <laughs> right after they release the JFK assassination stuff, they'll release that. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And look, and I remember as a kid hearing in, in 2020 something, uh, all, all the documents are going to be released for the JFK thing. Okay. Now when in 2020, because you know, everybody's dead by then. So yeah. now, now they can be released. Uh, we're going to tack on another 50 years to it. And, you know, we're, they're like, y'all, man. Well, I think that's pretty simple. The JFK stuff, in my opinion, is going to show a strong collusion with the government and Hell yeah. choosing the president, shall we say, and or choosing who is no longer going to be the president. And I think right now they couldn't release them because whether you like to agree with them or not, the deep state, the 
intelligence community is picking our president. They picked it in the last election. And the corporations are picking the CIA guys. I mean, right. this is all tied to money. I mean, it's uh, it's bizarre. It really is. Well, and it's uh, we talk about it a lot on the show, but it's not Democrats and Republicans. It is the powerful and the rest of us, you know. Yeah. So you can call it a caste system. You can, you know, it's for the plebs and, you know. To be know. fair, it's been like that across the whole world forever, ever since there was a world. Right. I mean, this is how things work, you know. But, you know, you were talking about the intelligence community and JFK. I wonder if Vladimir Zelensky knows that they have an early retirement plan waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> He's not, he doesn't have much longer, man. He's running out of time. You know, you know who else don't have much longer? Putin. Yeah, <laughs> Putin has anal cancer. I don't know if y'all know about it. We found out about it last week. But he is missing some events. So is Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping. And so is Xi Jinping. Yeah. And look at our leader. Well, they're all decrepit. But Here's the thing with Putin, though. I think when he's replaced. The world may yearn for the days of Vladimir Putin to be in charge of Russia, because I do not think they're going to put a softy moderate. Yeah, yeah, moderate. no, it, it's it's kind of like we all want Joe Biden to be replaced, but then it's Kamala Harris, so we're kind of like, eh, okay. You, you remember you remember when Gorbachev moved uh, moved out of the way and Boris Yeltsin got put up there? Yeah, and everybody was like, "Is he going to be worse?" Or is it going to be better? What about the guy before him that, like, caught a cold and you never heard of him again? Right. I don't, I don't even remember his name. He was on, he was only on there for a second. Oh, yeah. oh you mean like the Pope? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah, but, I mean, if, if you look at the folks that are in the positions of power and Russia is largely controlled by its military, those guys make Putin look like a, like a nice, pleasant fella. Putin's yeah. a... Putin's a rough one, man. He came from the KGB. Yeah. Right. I mean, he just, but that's what I mean. Like, Putin is... He, he just Putin knocking is, people out of the sky. These days. Right, yeah. I, I'm Gorbachev, really. I mean, look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got yeah. my Gorbachev. You know what? You, that, man, they had a cast of characters back in the in the, in the the uh, early... Uh, in the 80s and 90s, didn't they? Remember, remember Leonid Brezhnev? Yep, Brezhnev. Yep, yep. <laughs> Yeah, and and you had uh, Margaret back, Thatcher back when we still believed in all this. Yeah, Margaret Thatcher and oh, yeah. Ronald Reagan. And I for a while there, I thought both of them were seeing each other the way that they were so giddy on giddy over each other type of thing. Uh, man, I miss man. the days when Russia just had like a big drunk guy who you could tell drank way too much vodka. Vodka, <laughs> right? Like those Ferd Ferdinand Marcos out there. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and then and and then you had down in Sinaloa, you had um yeah the Colombia cartel growing as little kids in that big desert, uh, creating all that weed in the desert, <laughs> blowing blowing holes in the desert floor to get water. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. History is so funny, and some it of that is. stuff feels like ten thousand years ago, and it was like twenty years ago. But you know what? You know what's not funny? Oh, only a couple of years ago, there were marches on DC. Yeah. Right. And now the plaza, I mean, it's like the plaza is like a historical relic of what it used to be. There's nobody marching. And I mean, they did the Martin Luther King thing yesterday, but even that looked weak. Um they they have have they scared Americans in the closet? Have yes. they scared them? Uh, Americans, and because honestly, and I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings, but uh, that social activism online that don't do nothing except for piss you off in your basement. That's it. Maybe one day it'll all break out and we'll all go to Washington and we'll all wear masks. <laughs> That's the best time to do it. I'm telling you, wear a mask. I mean, uh, with or with, with or without a mandate. Just wear them so they can't see who you are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and I mean, they're going to know who you are. They're going to track 
track you the somehow, Mac- your phone or your credit card. I mean, let's face it, January 6th, they were pulling credit card records of people. Get so if you bought a hot dog at a hot dog stand, they knew it. Take get cash. vouchers. Take get vouchers. Cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah get vouchers. We can beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have to think about it a little bit, use yeah. a little bit of imagination, but we can beat them. Yeah. People, oh, yeah. always, people always beat their governments. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Share the show, ladies and gentlemen. Share the show. We're getting ready to bring on uh, Liz Harrington from the Trump campaign. And then after that is over, then we have another interview with a gentleman that is going to ch- that's going to tell us about ranked choice voting. It's what they're doing up there in Alaska right now. And he's trying to stop. Well, what's name? Um, she was going to be vice president. Palin. Palin uh, has been going around saying it looks like some of this stuff is happening within the states. Rank choice to. voting. Yeah. And, that, and that's something that you don't want. And, and you know what, too? But, um, before, uh, before we move on to the break, I was thinking about the, uh, the situation where Rona is telling everybody, yeah, we're the Repu- uh, we're the Republic County, and we want y'all to vote early. It's okay to vote early and vote early and vote. It's like we have a John Studden fixed the system that was messed up in the first place. You, I mean, I don't know who your experts are. I don't know who Carl your Rose. op research is, but you didn't miss the boat again. I mean, the only thing that we're saying, or the only thing that we've been saying is we have got to outvote the cheat. That's what we've been saying. We, I mean, we um, we did it in 2016. We did. Seriously, y'all, we did. We can do it again. And vote early and vote often. That's what I said yesterday. She right. 25 times. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, we're going to have Liz coming in in, in, in just a few seconds. Let's Let's take our break, and when we come back, we're going to have more from the Wayne Dupree Show along with Jason Robinson and Hutch Bailey Jr. Um, yeah, there's a tab up here. Where Attention the- Americans, breaking news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. Take action now. The Federal Reserve phase deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard. Your hard-earned assets are in jeopardy. But there's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Reach out to American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Visit protectfrombiden.com. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Be smart. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Visit protectfrombiden.com to get your free guide and get started. Again, that's protectfrombiden.com. When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition MyPillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60 day money back guarantee and 10 year warranty. Go to mypillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary My Pillow Queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size My Pillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at My Pillow, thanks America. Oops. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We need more um, No, 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 no. I was looking at um 
I was looking at a video and I um I guess I guess he's gonna hear this until he drops out. Uh, you know, we hadn't talked about uh Ron DeSantis for a little bit. President Trump kind of brought him up a little bit. Did you see that? Okay, listen, you know, I saw that story and that I, thought it was, I thought it was a racial thing. Yeah, yeah nothing to do with race. <laughs> I thought that was a racial thing because nope. the black guy got shot or whatever happened. And, you know, they, man, and they said, you're not welcome here. I'm thinking, oh, man, here we go. And yeah. then I see that. It's like, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you see Did you see that the, the percentage of black male support for President yes. Trump jumped yes. up to 20%? And it's growing. No. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I, I am seeing it online. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it on TikTok. I'm seeing I saw it on, it on the street in Atlanta. Yes. <laughs> I, it's in Florida. Um, it, it's, it, it's, I mean, it, it's grown so much because black men, black men understand that when Donald Trump was in, they want to make money. They want to be responsible for their, their lives and their direction. Donald Trump was giving them that even, even with the first step or, um, you know, that step program, um, on jet, it's like, he was at least saying y'all matter too, where that's a reversal of what the Dems did in the fifties and sixties by taking them black men out of the homes and paying uh, mothers, um, black mothers per child, the, the separation of the black family back then. And I've said on the show, what, what you're seeing now is a separation and the destruction of white families uh, with the LGBT and the um, um, the LGBT and the watch card movement, but I will say this, and then I hand it over to my boys. Anybody that is saying that the white race is dying out, it's a lie. It is. It's a lie. Every everywhere I look, I see a white person. <laughs> On TV, I see white people. I conferences, I see white. I don't know what y'all are talking about that they're dying out. Well, I, I really don't. I know one thing they need, we need to up our game a little bit, man. Some of them people out there with the purple hair and stuff. I mean, well, yeah. well, I mean, y'all, well, they are getting crazy though, but, they, <laughs> but they're not dying out. No, they um, you know, I mean, you know, well, and, and another thing that is happening too, if you want to talk about the dying out and if you want to put some credence to that, then you talk about, the 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 trans stuff that is going on with that and the, too and the immigration the illegal invasion yeah yeah they, i mean y'all are effect y'all are training these kids and you know you we just wait a generation or two and the democrats all die out because they're not having babies i use it and i still think you want to get rid of racism just let maxine waters die out just let these people die off and maybe it brings it down a notch because a lot of people in Congress right now, they went through the civil rights movement stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff that is still in their brains. They look, they, they sit in their rocking chair. I remember when that brick hit me right in my head, white people are devils. And, and, and then, and then you got the white people, man, them people, them people or something. I don't even think they take a bath. So I mean, you know, you I mean, you just got a whole lot of old stuff out there that just needs to die off. That's the, it. The, the scary part though is they've these they've ruined these kids. You sit down with a that's twenty to thirty twenty to thirty year old and you mention homosexuality and they're gonna act like it's just another color. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's really bad. These people they're they're afraid to say anything. Yeah. You know, I remember I was talking to a guy where I used to work. I went and visited the guy that took over for me and I'm talking to him. And I said, what about all that gay stuff, man? He's like, shh, shh, shh. Dude, right next door. 
You know? It's like, damn. Can't even say the word. No. F-A-G anymore. No. Well, and it's it's, it's fascinating. It's a group of sticks. It's a, yeah, it's a cigarette. Right? It's a cigarette. <laughs> well, it's fascinating how all this stuff's coming full circle, too. Like the African-American men supporting Trump. For years, we over-criminalized drugs that were used in the African-American community, like crack. Joe Biden passed the legislation. You know, Kamala Harris was a big part of that. Whether it was intentional or not to target the black community is different, but why did crack get much more serious crimes than regular cocaine? And now all those guys are seeing law being unfairly applied to President Trump, and they're going, huh, we've lived that. Like, that's my boy. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. And you look at Atlanta, and you see the only defendant in that case that didn't get bail was a black guy. But Everybody it wasn't else got bail. Yeah, but it wasn't because he was black, though. Yeah, I mean, right. seriously, was it, what, it, it wasn't because he was black. What did he do? Homeboy, homeboy got issues. Um, really? He had an issue. Yeah, yeah. He had, he had, um, they tried to serve him a subpoena up in D.C., and he allegedly assaulted the FBI agent. Now, I don't know why they waited until, I mean, there was a warrant out for him, but I don't know why they didn't arrest him then at the time. I don't, maybe he ran or whatnot, but he, that, that's the issue. Allegedly, he assaulted the FBI agent. So, yeah, that, that, that's, that, it's more, it, it wasn't because he was black. I tell you that. that that's not the case. But, a narrative is a narrative, and once that narrative funny. gets wheels, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to bring it back. Um, yeah, it's hard to bring it back, and that's a shame. So, but they are raising money for him, and that's a good thing, ladies and gentlemen. Let me welcome my sister to the stage, Miss Liz Harrington. What's up, Miss Harrington? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Want to talk about? Uh, want to talk about what's going on because uh, President Trump was here yesterday, and I want to say we want to say thank you. Indeed, great we interview, you. guys. Thank it was you great. for um, uh, giving us a chance because we've been trying to do that for a long time, and nobody, nobody was giving us a connection at all. Listen, um, we uh, as as we're watching these these. Uh, these indictments, and now there's supposed to be a court case, um, a, a date, a date right after, right after Super Tuesday. Is that right? Or the day before. before. <laughs> That's. I heard Donald Trump was going to, well, President Trump was going to appeal that one too. Yes. Uh, they are really pulling out all the stops right now, aren't they, Liz? It, it's incredible, Wayne. I mean. It's so transparent what they're doing, at least <laughs> for a change. It's kind of in a way they're being more honest about just how you know evil they, they are and trying to take away the choice from the American people. I mean, they do not want President Trump to be the nominee. I mean, that is clear. They want to take him off the ballot. Uh, picking a court date, this very biased judge. I mean, she said... The, the prosecutors, these corrupt prosecutors wanted January 2nd. And she said, oh, well, that's not reasonable. And then our defense wanted 2026. So they said, you took two and a half years to investigate this case. We're going to need <laughs> at least that amount of time. I mean, that's what the January 6th defendants have been yep. rotting away in solitary confinement without a trial. Mm -hmm. So you can just see the double standard there. And she said, well, that's not acceptable. Uh, let's meet in the middle. No, let's meet the day before Super Tuesday on March 4th, 2024, right in the middle of the election campaign when we know President Trump will be the nominee. I mean, he's winning by so such large margins. It's historic uh, because he's not an incumbent. Um, but he, I mean, essentially is because the American people want him back. Yeah. They know him. Yeah. They, they want him back in the White House. So look, it, it's it's so obvious what they're doing. They're trying to really steal another election, but it's not going to work because the American people are so wise to it. I think I heard Alan Dershowitz say if they use that date, that they'll have to read 70,000 pages a day right. up until that date to go over everything. It's really ridiculous. Well, uh, it, I wanted to, 
Yeah. Good. Good. Sorry. No, go ahead. I mean, it's just exactly. They've had all the time in the world to, you know, have this witch hunt and they've harassed everybody. You know, they've brought everyone in there and then they want to jam it through as a really a Stalinist show trial uh, mm -hmm. to just try to get a, a, a sham conviction because they're doing it in the most biased jurisdiction in the country. You know, it's 2% Trump voters in D.C. So right, right, we, we right. know what they're doing. And a judge comes from a communist background, you know, but <laughs> other than that, uh, right. I, I want a little inside baseball. Um, I don't want a whole lot of details, but I was thinking about this before the show. Uh, the president is facing four federal and state indictments. Does he have one legal team or does he have to have four, one for each one? It's, it's just, uh, I was thinking, you know, this guy's going through all this and he took the time to come on our show yesterday. That just shows you character to me. What a guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it does. And, you know, he really does have time for for the people and your show reaches a lot of people. And I think he thought it was important. And he's known you, Wayne, for a long time since the since he ran the first time. So mm -hmm. it's important for him. But, yeah, I mean, there's multiple different teams of attorneys wow. because wow. there's many different issues. I mean, they're all <laughs> such shams. They really have no basis in the law, but some of them are state, some of them are federal, some of them. Or civil, you know, don't forget, he's also got civil cases right. they're harassing him with, which is just trying to take, drain him of resources, distract yeah. him, uh, you know, yeah. hurt his family, hurt his business. Um, he's used to it. Um, but yeah, that's the goal. They want to drain resources. They want to take time off the trail. Uh, they want to use it for propaganda purposes. And ultimately, they want to use Welfare. it to get him off the ballot. And it's just it just shows you the disdain they have for our system. They do not like our constitutional republic as it was founded. They don't like the people getting a say. They don't like the separation of powers, the checks and balances. And they are so terrified that the highest elected official in the land will be President Trump again because we right. actually had representation for for the first time in a very long time. Mm -hmm. it you know, it's funny. One of the things we talk about on the show a lot, Liz, is how a lot of times our biggest obstruction isn't from the Democrats. Like We can see that. It's from the establishment Republicans shanking us in the back. Mm -hmm. And as I look at all these other people running for president, it, it feels like they're just shanking the Trump campaign in the back. And I watch some of these campaigns. It's almost like they're intentionally trying to run a horrible campaign. I mean, Ron DeSanctimonious, I don't think he could have run a worse campaign. If you if you guys sat down and said, let's let's run the worst campaign we can against Trump, it, it would be what they did. And so, you know, what's kind of the campaign's thought on why are these guys still in the race? Why aren't they just, you know, take, packing up their tent and going home? Exactly. I mean, and think of it, it's such a horrible campaign that's going to be wasting hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, right. yeah. you yeah. think money could buy something a little bit better. Right. It's embarrassing in a way. But I think it made it clear his answer the other day when you know President Trump gets arraigned, dragged to Fulton County Jail, gets his mugshot taken, and then Ron DeSanctimonious is uh, at the Field of Dreams, you know, playing, right. playing, yeah. playing, you know, it was just very odd, the optics, but he was asked, you know, why didn't you, he had to look on stage at what everyone else was doing right. when he was asked if, you know, he will support the nominee, <laughs> President Trump. And he had to look around. And so he got very defensive when he was asked, you know, you know, what's your position here? And, and he says, oh, you know, no, it wasn't that. I just didn't think we were doing the hand raising and all this nonsense. And then he goes, but if that's the case, if President Trump gets convicted, I don't think he'll be the nominee anyway. Oh, really? So you're basically admitting that your only shot is that these disgusting Marxist show trials are successful? Yep. And you're actually hoping that's the case. I mean, because that gives it all away. That's why you're right. running. You were assured by all the big money people and people at Fox News and everything else that don't worry, there's indictments coming. He's going to mm -hmm. crash in the polls. But he will clear the way for you. Well, it's not working out that way because the American people know exactly what's going on. They know these are all shams and they're so they're illegal i mean the people that are committing the crimes are the people that are going after president trump 
They're extorting attorneys. They're uh, violating his First Amendment rights. They're breaking into his Twitter account. They illegally raided his home. Mm -hmm. Everything that's come of this has been fruit from a poisonous tree. And mm -hmm. the sanctimonious is admitting that, yep, I want more of that poison fruit. That is my only shot. And I think that says a lot. And I think the same with Mike Pence, same with all these people who are going nowhere in the polls because the people, again, once you get a real alternative, once you get the real thing, like you have in President Trump, a true leader whose only agenda is to help the country, you can see through everyone else and how phony they are. Speak about, speak about a man not of the people. Let me show you this. <laughs> I love their faces because they're like, okay, this is going really bad. I know. It's like, he's what do we do? And, he's going to go home and beat the dog. I, <laughs> I love that you asked President Trump this question yesterday, though, because it's true. It's like, it, we know what we're getting from the left. We know what we're getting from these corrupt agencies that are so entrenched and just terrible. But we're supposed to have a real opposition. We're supposed to have people that claim to be on the side of the Constitution, that claim to be on the side of the American people. And we frankly don't have that outside of a very small handful and, of course, outside of President Trump. And that's what really I think President Trump has exposed so much. that It really has been a uniparty. There hasn't been. It's just a theater. It, it's political games. But they all you know, support the same things. They support the endless wars. They support the open border. Uh, mm -hmm. They do not care about our interests and everyone joining in. I mean, this is a huge moment in our country. It's not about President Trump. And he's just the one that's standing in the way and fighting. But it's about the survival of our nation. And it will affect everybody. And so we need these politicians who are supposed to be on the side of truth and supposed to be on the side uh, of all the things we believe in, we need them to unite and fight on behalf of all of us and fight on behalf of President Trump. And they're not doing that. And it's just, it's super disappointing. But again, look how smart the people are. I mean, the, we want Trump. That is what they want. That is what they're going to get because he, President Trump's not going anywhere. So, Liz, when we, uh, was it my turn? I, I lost track. Yeah, right, right. right. Uh, I wanted to ask, I, I didn't have time and it wasn't that important, but I wanted to ask President Trump something yesterday that I didn't. How did it feel driving down that road in Atlanta on the way to Fulton County with all those people out there just cheering and, oh man, that, that was a moment for me. That was incredible. And you know, what, you know what, let me add on, let me add on to that question too, because a lot of people, um, I was speaking with somebody last night and they were like, well, that was a, a photo op. And I was like, no, <laughs> that's where the jail was in the black yep. community. That that the, that jail, you know how they put churches and liquor stores and 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 abortion clinics in the black community. That jail was in the black community. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I love it. Yeah, he's he, what he's trying to get arrested just for photo ops. I mean, right. no, he's he's standing up for the country and they're arresting him. I mean, on sham fake trumped up charges. Um, but it's it's incredible because all the other ones at least were a little bit more savvy to think this could backfire. This mugshot right. Right. could backfire. Right. Um, you know, and obviously president trump nobody wants to be falsely accused i mean nobody right. wants to be persecuted like this but at the same time no one else could could really take all these slings and arrows for mm -hmm. the people like he has and he's so yeah. strong and he's always got a positive outlook and he's just he's an incredible incredible leader and exactly what this country needs but i don't know what he felt you know driving through but i think you know he sees something that's happening in the country and feels it at all the rallies uh, and just the, the mood and the energy and the spirit, it is off the charts. And I think this is going to backfire on them. It already has uh, incredibly like who could have even imagined that it would backfire this much. 
Um, mm-hmm. But it's going to, this one in particular too, I mean, he's going to reach out to so many more voters, people that are, you know, disengaged from the political process and they see this and they say, this is wrong. This is wrong. I mean, this makes me want to support him. And I think that's really going to happen in huge, huge numbers from, you know, he's already uh, expanded the tent for the Republican Party like we never even imagined. And make no mistake, no other candidate will ever bring in Hispanic voters, black voters, Mm -hmm. uh, you name it, Asian voters, all the different demographics, young voters. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to bring in uh, (laughs) a conventional Republican candidate. No, they're going to get the vote of like a Mitt Romney. It's not or Bush, which is just you can't win elections that way anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to expand it. You have to get disaffected Democrats. You have to get independents. And that's who President Trump gets because he's common sense. He loves the country. Man of the people. And he's a man. Exactly. He's a man of the people. I was going to say that leads into the question I was going to ask, because we had People's Pundit Rich Barris on a couple of weeks ago. And he was talking about the Trump electorate and how many people he brought out. And and I mean, the good news, bad news about the mugshot, I mean, the bad news is it's a horrible thing for the country. The good news is it's really good for your campaign, for selling merchandise and waking people up. And I think it it allows you to expand the outreach into some of these communities that have been affected by two-tier justice system and, and not just racial divide, but economic and, and socioeconomic factors. But your guys' internal numbers, does it show what we're, believing what rich was saying that without that mega trump base the republican party is essentially done irrelevant oh, done. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely i mean it is it, it is you cannot uh, overstate it i mean the amount of people i mean and you have, just look at 2020 and the numbers that they claim are official numbers right that right. is mm-hmm. unheard of you right. do not an incumbent president you know I think every time since, you know, once in the 1800s that uh, gains votes never loses because they never gain votes. They actually you know, a lot of incumbent presidents win by losing votes. Obama lost millions of votes in 2012 from 2008. Even though he I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Except the> Philadelphia <laughs> comes. Right. I know, with all, you know, it's uh, our elections. <laughs> that's the thing. It's not, it didn't start in 2020. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. But um, I mean, it's unheard of. He went from 63 million to 75 million people, yep. the yep. most in history. Yep. And you're going to yep. pretend that Joe Biden, that Joe Biden who ran for president <laughs> three times, never made it out of Iowa. Because yep. he's such a yep. horrible human being and, and no one, yep. I mean, he's a horrible politician. Everything about him is just terrible. He's been taking bribes for decades. And so, I mean, it's just on its face, everyone knows, but that we're, we're talking about the amount of people that he has brought in. First time yep. voters. I mean, it's people have been disaffected for years and he gave them a real alternative. And why? Because we got something for the first time that we really haven't gotten since who even knows how far mm-hmm. back we got someone who ran on a platform, a very specific agenda. And guess what? He executed that agenda. He didn't. Yep. I mean, yep. He made us energy independent. He closed the border and made it most secure. He, he didn't start any wars. He was getting us out of wars. I mean, he yep. did the trade deals, all of the manufacturing, all of these things, very fundamental, but he was sincere and he's a doer mm-hmm. and he's a builder. That's been his entire life. He's, he's not just showing up, you know, he, he's doing it to get things done, to accomplish something. And that's why he was rewarded with this huge expansion of, of voters. It just, it does not happen. And that's exactly. going to continue to happen. So yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's what we see. And, it, and the more they go after him, the more they're waking up people that have been totally disengaged. Um, and they're going to show up again next time. Well, I, you know, I appreciate, you know, and it was a, it was a late minute type of thing that I wanted to get you on, but I, I want to, Work. and um i mean i'm glad thank you for taking the time out but um do you have any last uh, uh thoughts for uh, my audience before i let you go just keep it up guys we need the truth out there we need 
uh, to rally behind President Trump. I know we already are, but this country, it's definitely worth saving and um, we got to fight. So great to see you guys. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Liz. Thanks, Liz. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that, that smile from Hutch Bailey Jr. <laughs> the good old yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to do what we want to do and how we want to do it. That's that's just the way it's going to go. Okay. Um, I thought it was that, coming uh, from my phone. I was like, I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was funny. It, it, it was funny, but uh, you know, my, um, the favorite song, my daughter's favorite song, is this. She remembers it from our old days, but it's um, champagne yeah. life. Yeah, it's a shit. It's champagne life. Beautiful day. It's a beautiful night. All ladies say. Champagne life. Um, we are going to take another break. When we have enough, uh, when we come back, we want to talk to uh, uh, Phil Eisen, who is going to talk t- to us about um, the ranked choice voting, which everybody should know about and everybody needs to look at. And that's why we were talking yesterday. Get elected in your local communities because you can stop this if you and when you see it coming down the pike you can stop this hutch bailey jr jason robinson wayne dupree here on the wayne dupree podcast broadcasting on red voice media network we will be right back When I invented my pillow, my passion was to help each and every one of you. And 20 years later, all of your support is what keeps us going. Because of you, we've been able to create thousands of USA jobs and help millions get the best sleep ever. To thank you, my employees and I are bringing you a limited edition my pillow. The Giza Elegance My Pillow is made with my patented adjustable fill, the most amazing cotton, and a two-inch pipe gusset. It has four custom loft levels, machine washable and dryable, and you get my 60-day money-back guarantee and 10-year warranty. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code to get your limited edition 20th anniversary MyPillow queen size. Retails for $69.98, now only $19.98. That's right, get a queen size MyPillow for only $19.98. From all of us here at MyPillow, Thanks America! We interrupt today's programming to bring unfortunate news. Biden's dangerous plan for a digital dollar is underway. Don't be fooled. It won't benefit you. So take action now. The Federal Reserve's phased deployment of FedNow began on July 1st, 2023. Be prepared. This may catch many off guard and put your hard-earned assets in jeopardy. But here's the good news. There's a simple legal tax loophole to opt out of the digital dollar. Speak to someone at American Alternative Assets for a free wealth protection guide and discover how to safeguard your wealth with gold and silver IRAs against a failing dollar and volatile markets. Dial 833-2-USA-GOLD. Yes, call now. 833-287-2. This invaluable guide provides precise steps to transfer your IRA or 401k into precious metals without any tax consequences. Don't let Biden force you into using the government's new digital dollar. Call 833, the number two USA Gold. Yes, call now. 833-287-2465. Act swiftly. 833-287-2465. This is the Wayne Dupree Program. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the <laughs> welcome back no, to the radio. Be wrong. <laughs> Thank you. We for just got it. a copyright strike. <laughs> well, you know what? This is the one. This is the one that can play, but uh, it won't take me down. But. Uh, we aren't monetizing on YouTube anyway, so <laughs> you know, there we go. Uh Hutch Bailey Jr., Jason Robinson, Wayne Dupree here on Okay. Thank you. The devil got into that one. Um yeah, yeah. We uh, we're waiting um, we're waiting for our guests to join us now. We want to thank Liz uh for coming on after <laughs> I was so pumped up after the Donald Trump 
interview yesterday. I was like, Liz, 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 come on, come on, come on. We've got to bring you on. But, um, yeah, again, I want to uh, give her a, a huge shout out and a huge hug. And all the Trump team over there uh, for uh, allowing that to happen yesterday. And for anybody that's angry that we got the Trump uh, uh, interview, sorry for you. I don't stop until I get what I want. That that that's. I mean, I mean, I don't. If I can't go in through the door, I go in through the window. If I can't go in through the window, I will. I'll, I'll tunnel through if I have to. But I'm gonna get what I need for me and my boys, and that's that. That's just how it is, you know. Um, now there is one thing though uh, that I learned a long time ago, and I don't, I don't know if y'all learned this, but a long time ago. I was being, uh, you know, I, I was told I was going to get this, I was going to get that, I was going to get that, but and then I would go out and tell all the kids, "I'm getting this, I'm getting that, I'm getting that," and I wouldn't get it. You know, right. I was like, they had egg all over my face and stuff. I was, but I learned over my life. I've learned keep your mouth shut and let it happen, and then yep. there it is. So and gloat. Uh, yeah, I kept I kept that Trump thing close to the chest. For a long time before I was able to talk to my boys, and then when I did talk to my boys, we had we had to cancel it and move it. <laughs> right? I'm like story of my life. Freaking Georgia! I, I told everybody. <laughs> By the way, tomorrow we will have uh, uh, spooky. We'll have um, uh, hmm. I forget his name. Just spooky. Colonel Tony Schaefer. 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 Sorry. We have Tony Schaefer coming in tomorrow. And we will also have uh, uh, one of the best Donald Trump impersonators. Uh, uh, he, imper he impersonated Donald Trump in, uh, like, uh, in front of him, actually. Uh, Sean? Yeah, well, we have Sean. Oh, on. you got Sean on. I love that yeah. guy. He's, we he's have Sean on excellent. tomorrow. Uh -huh. He's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Between him and the guy that, that uh, just got sick, I forget his name, the actor, the black guy. He he was good too. I can't yeah. remember. His, he, he just had like a stroke. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. Um, and um, he's just, he's just coming back. No, Sean. Uh, I saw Sean's video with President Trump, and he was in front of President Trump doing it, and President Trump was looking at him like. Yeah, he got me. He this got me. Funny. He does. He does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I can draw a comparison to between Trump and DeSantis, and why do we love Trump? One of them, thousand reasons. But Donald Trump sees this dude who does impersonation of him, and he he supports Trump's politics. Donald Trump thinks it's funny. Takes a picture yep. with him. Which, yeah. frankly, if there's a Wayne Dupree impersonator out there, like Wayne will have you on the show. Like if you yeah. do a good Wayne. Or a good Hutch or a good JR. Like, I, don't think, I don't even think there's one out there, but you know, right. we'll see. We'll the see. thing but, I like about him is like DeSantis tries to be somebody he's not. That's what I was getting Trump, at. Trump yeah. is totally unique. Nobody talks talks like president. He's yeah. just his own thing, his own thing, and he's not hiding it. He doesn't care about it. And right. it, it's working for him. Yeah. Well, and that's what yeah. I was gonna say. I, I touched on it a little bit yesterday. I went back and watched some of the debate stuff and like, I just didn't like how DeSantis did. And I went through and I watched it a second time and I liked it even worse. And and what it struck me with is he was somebody who always seemed to be giving what the politically correct answer was or what everybody thinks or what's going to keep people happy. When he mm -hmm. avoided questions, It he specifically steered questions out of answering the questions people wanted to know. And that mm -hmm. is Republican politician 101. We yep. saw that with every Repo Republican politician of our lifetime. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons why why I just something visceral about DeSantis where it's and he didn't always used to be like that. But he's just now it's just like, okay, what do my handlers say I can say? Okay, I can raise my hand or I can answer that question. You know what he used to be? A nobody. Right. He used to be a nobody. And I mean nobody cared anybody anything about Ron DeSantis in the house. Nobody cared about it. Nobody knew about him. And the only reason why we did know about it is because President Trump came out and said, I got this guy who's thinking about running for governor down in Florida. 
And I think I think we ought to support him. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? So he goes down there. He he he, he one of the closest governor's races that I've seen in a long time. He barely beat the guy. Barely. I mean, if he would have sneezed on the wrong way, he probably would have lost. So he barely beat the guy. And then he gets in there, and then his piss don't stink. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you the truth. That's that's just who he is. And like you said, he I mean, every almost everything that he said up there on that debate stage was a popular type of response. And I mean, look, if that's your stick, that's your stick. But it doesn't really say who you are. Right. Because they were at, because they a couple of times they asked him questions and he didn't answer. He didn't when, answer. When he did, I mean, between him and Chris Christie, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the paradigm has shifted a little bit. Now we're blaming or, or we're using as the reason that we need to be in Ukraine as China. Yep. How the hell that happened, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. but, the, but the sand has started it, and Christie went up next. So you know that's coming from Raytheon. You yeah. know that's coming from Boeing. Yeah. Is they want to get make, make China the bad guy because nobody believes Russia is anymore. Well, and in that debate, the Ukraine question summed up the entire DeSantis campaign in a nutshell to me. It's raise your hand if you think we need to stop funding Ukraine. Vivek raises his hand. DeSantis kind of goes half raises his hand. He goes, the rest of Europe needs to pay its, its share, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that wasn't the question, Ron. The question yeah, right. is, do you continue supporting funding the war in Ukraine? Yes or no? Right. We're not an answer for America. Right. Yeah. And if you're half raising your hand, what does that even mean? Well, yeah, if Europe's going to pay for it, we'll keep sending money. But if you're... I got the video. I got the video. Here you go. That plan. Is there anyone on stage who would not support the increase of more funding to Ukraine? We would, would not Europe, support it. Europe needs to step up. I mean, I would have Europe step up and do their job. Right, Mr. Ramaswamy, you're, but you're saying you would not too, Governor DeSantis? I will have Europe to p- pull their weight. Uh, right would, now, they're not doing you that. Not and I think we need to do, and, and I think our support should be contingent on them doing it. And I would have support in China uh, to be able to take, uh, to be able to take China um, and do what we need to do with China. Mr. Ramaswamy, you would not support an increase of funding to Ukraine? I would not. And I think that this is disastrous, that we are protecting against an invasion across somebody else's border when we should use those same military resources to prevent across the invasion of our own southern border here in the United States of America. We are driving. Here's the thing. Whoever, it's just like y'all said, whoever talked to him, whoever talked to DeSantis, told him what the China response to Ukraine was going to be attached to that. He forgot how to express it and was put off by the hand that was <laughs> by the hand. And going the, to, which yeah, way is he, the he, wind blowing, Ron? Which also shows that he can't keep on focus what he wants to talk about because when he turned around, did you see his face? He was like, uh, uh, uh. He was just lost. Like he lo- just like he looked in that clip that you played earlier in the crowd at Jacksonville. Yes, yes, same right. thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same We're not going to allow these institutions to be targeted by people. We want Trump. Okay, listen. A robot almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's. Yeah, he's lost. I liked when Vivek, uh, Nikki Haley was getting on Vivek about not having foreign policy experience. And he's like, yeah, I hope you uh, get your new job ready at vice president of Boeing. Right. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) whatever she said, something like that. Right, yeah. (laughs) Well, and it's it's interesting, too, because I think one part where Donald Trump changed the paradigm, and I don't think people give enough credit to it, we would rather have our leaders tell us something that they believe And we disagree with them, but they're honest with us. This is what I think. This is what I'm going to do. You may not like it. We would much rather have that than some mealy-mouthed Republican politician who's not going to answer the question on Ukraine. You know, Ron, if you want to send troops to Ukraine and you think it's important, 
tell me you believe that and tell me why you believe that. And I'm adult enough to make a decision if I want to support you. Don't lie to me. Don't try to act like you kind of do, but kind of don't. We all know you're just going to keep funding it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> Look, this Eminem thing uh, is getting uh, crazy, too, because children. You, you know what? Here's the thing. Um, and I and I really think the conservative right is a little hypocritical in this thing. Because first off, it happens every election cycle. Secondly, we talk about the right. I mean, we talk about the left all the time. We talk about how nasty they are and filthy they are and all that stuff and everything. But then we want to use their music in our campaigns <laughs> and then expect them to be okay with it. You know, I, that, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, think about it. That's common sense. Maybe if you uh, talk to them and make friends with them and stuff, but I'm not saying you have to, but if you're going to talk about them and, 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 and put the, and put the, uh, um, the police light spotlight on them and said, y'all bad, y'all doing this, and y'all doing that and everything. And I, why are you going to play their music at, at your campaigns? I, I don't get it. And then get mad with them when they tell you to stop. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it's me. I mean, we need more conservative songwriters out there so that we would have conservative singers so that we could play. I mean, there's a whole lot of country music out there. I mean, you know, you all might get tired of country music, but I saw Vivek's rap. I did. I, I, I did. It, it was great. I saw, iPod. It was weird. It was weird. And I tell you why. I, and, and even Bill Maher told him, dude, <laughs> don't do it. Don't, no, don't do it. But when I saw it, I was I really wasn't looking at him. I was looking at the people. And the people were lost. They were like, here in Iowa, you know have was, that two, two things that don't go together <laughs> Iowa politics and freaking rap. That just that doesn't work, man. That's that's yeah, what I mean, you got to come in there with you got the girl, I got the gun. Come on, boy, we're gonna have a little fun. Oh, yeah, yeah let's get the back in a cowboy hat with boots and yeah, a you flannel gotta shirt. Like that. Yeah, let's get, get the that, Rebecca, next time you go to Iowa, dress cowboy. Get, yeah, get, dude. get some of that broccoli barbecue. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, give me give me some of that corn on a stick, you know, yeah, right. like, that type you of know, thing. But, here's the thing though that we got to talk about culturally and how how it shifted is growing up, I listened to all the anti-establishment stuff. I was into heavy metal, punk rock. Rage Against the Machine, one of my favorite bands, they would sing about government corruption and and how, you know, corruption at all levels. And you had all and all those folks doing that. Eminem, he was an anti-establishment guy. He was talking about inequity and and, you know, trying to rise up from the trailer park and all those mm -hmm. things. Now, all those folks have moved to the establishment side and it is so depressing. Rage Against the Machine, which built their whole brand on the government's corrupt and we need to fight against it is now supporting all the government establishment. And it's just such a weird dichotomy where you get these conservative guys, like suddenly we're the rebels, like I'm going to raise kids and go to church. You rebel. What are you doing? It's, it's just bizarre. <laughs> I'll tell you it even farther. You look at the Democrat machine that's in power, especially the older ones. Those were your Vietnam war protesters, right? Your draft dodgers. Yeah. They're and now we're cheering for the war in Ukraine. Yeah. Exact same scenario almost from uh, what the end result's going to be, other than we don't have boots on the ground yet. Yet. They're close. You know, we, um, we're supposed to have um, a guest on. I guess he's in Alaska too. So uh, probably had probably, a time zone thing. Yeah. Exactly. He'll log in in an hour and be like, where are you guys? I know. Right. 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 I mean, and if, and if we don't get him on today, we'll, we'll, um, We'll fix that. Um, we've been saying, or a lot of people have been saying, they don't know Vivek. We don't know him. We don't know anything about him. It's true. It is. Uh, sort of. Vivek seems like he's been out there uh, on TV a lot. 
well, not a lot, but he's been, he's been, he's been out there. I saw him uh, on Tucker I'm, Carlson a couple of times. Uh, well, no, no not we, before, um, he, mean, before he announced. Right. He was, he was on Tucker before he announced about financial stuff. Really? Mm -hmm. hmm. I think he's friends with him. I'm not sure, but Tucker speaks pretty highly. He did before he announced and everything. As a matter of fact, he announced on Tucker's show. Did he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got an interesting background, and it's funny how people are kind of getting weird about it. I mean, he he did uh, biotech stuff, and he did finance stuff, which, while we don't like those industries, since he left before he ran for president, he became critics of both industries. And he went into them, and he made his money, and then he got out, and he's like, yeah, this is bad. Makes you think, so, doesn't it? Breaking news, um, Suarez it drops out of the Republican primary. I got to get rid of all my shirts now. Oh. I had Larry shirts, Elder. hats. I was ready. <laughs> Larry Elder goes. Hey, Larry, <laughs> you should be next, homie. Can we Stay get Larry, Larry on the show? show? Don't you know, Larry? I want to see him get. I want to see him bankrupt the RNC first. <laughs> you want to see him win the lawsuit? This yeah. is this is Vivek at a Democratic. Um, uh, uh, you remember when Al Sharpton was running for president? Yeah. yeah. Vivek was in the audience. Question here, go ahead. Reverend Sharpton, hello, I'm Vivek, and I want to ask you, uh, last week on the show we had Senator Kerry, and this week, and, and, and the week before we had Senator Edwards, and my question for you is, of all the Democratic candidates out there, why should I vote for the one with the least political experience? Well, you shouldn't, because I have the most political experience. <laughs> I got involved in the political uh, movement when I was 12 years old, and I've been involved in social policy for the last 30 years. So don't confuse people that have a job with political experience. Uh, whoever the head of, uh, uh, of, of some local bureaucracy has a job in Cambridge. That doesn't mean that they have political experience, and it doesn't mean they have the experience to uh, run the United States uh, government. So I think that we confuse title holders with political experience, as we have, uh, have seen with the present occupant in the White House. George Bush was a governor and clearly has shown he doesn't have political experience. <laughs> One. Where in the hell did you find that? <laughs> that was on the internet. Some, but I think the campaign released it. Uh, I don't know about that's that. that's the way to get Republican voters go out there for Al Sharpton, baby. I know, right? Right? It's like, wait a minute, he was at a demo, so he was, but he was all he smiles voted. too. He, has, he hasn't lost that smile, has he? He has not lost that smile. But I mean, you know, I mean. You know, that's he's been out there. He's been out there. And uh, I'm, try, I'm still trying to think, I'm, you know, I'm still trying to think because um, the only way we can get him is a, a pre-record interview. So, you know, we, we'll see. You know, I will say just a couple things on Vivek. Uh, one, some <laughs> of the debunking that he has claimed on the charges uh, he actually has on his campaign website. Whether or not it's true or not, I can't verify, but people are bringing up things like the Soros stuff and whatever. It's on his website. Take it or leave it. And you the second think thing is I, oh. is I think as we look at outsider candidates who aren't part of the political establishment, they're mm. going to come with baggage like this. If you were successful and got the money to run for president, they're, the industries you're going to come out of are going to be things we don't like. And if you're a young person who's uh, it's disproportionately Democrat for young people. And so you're going to get people like Trump, who used to be a Democrat, that are going to be part of the movement. So, Well, at least you can see that he was always in politics. I mean, if he's that young and he's doing it, he must have been doing it for a while. Uh, that, my, Chris, my, that Chris Matthews thing was old, though. Yeah. I, I haven't seen Chris for a long time, have you? Since he got outed or whatever the hell it was. When he was drunk. I'll tell you, the way I look at it is I don't have time for Vivek. We got to save this country, man. We got one guy out there that's got the vast majority of votes. We're wasting our time with him. I mean, that's my opinion. 
Mm-hmm. And I felt the same way about Ted Cruz. You know, it's like, good guy, good guy, but he ain't going to win this time. So right. You know we, we had a host. We had a host. Um, <laughs> Jim, we lost so, 20 of them. Yeah, we um, we had four. Ho- we had four hosts on at the time. It was me, Hutch, and then was two more guys. One of the guys didn't like Trump at all. Didn't like him at all. Okay. And then the other one liked Ted Cruz. And they and 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 um the one that liked Ted Cruz, he 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 knew Ted Cruz was gonna win, period. He he just knew it. And the more we talked about Trump, the more he was backing down and backing down until he called one night and he was like, I'm not gonna be able to make the show because uh I got a um uh, I got a um wedding anniversary that I gotta go to. I said, okay, hey, congratulations. You look on social media and he's just typing on social media, Trent Ted Cruz, this Ted Cruz that. I was like, wait a minute, I thought he had a wedding anniversary he had to get to. Oh, okay, all right. I get it, I get it. But the other one just made fun of Donald Trump until he just went off into the sunset. He he never came back. You know, he was like, he ain't gonna win, he's not gonna win. No, and you know, he's you know, I was like, okay, all right. But um Donald Trump stood the test of time, and I think we've said it on this show before. Uh, not you, Putin might, she might, maybe. Well, we know Kim Jong Un will. Uh, there aren't a lot of people that is going to take all this stuff and just remain in the race. Yep. You had to be built. You have to be. You have. To, you had to come from a special cloth. You're damn right. I mean, you look. The entire yeah. government is aimed at us, yep. its own citizens. We don't. This. This isn't a normal election, man. This. This is like the last chance. If we. <laughs> if they. If we allow them to secure another four years, they will dismantle the constitution. And Guaranteed the fact is, it's coming for your guns in the next four years. The fact is, it's going to be hard to win this one too. Because when 2020 went the way it did, shall we say, so we don't get canceled on social media, if you look at the rapid acceleration of the erosion of constitutional rights, um, it's going to be hard to win this election. It's true. I mean, and this is the natural progression of a dying regime. This is what they do when they're dying. The only thing left is what's going to be the giant misery we have to go through because it's always there. It's almost like... like, um... You have a, you have a hurt, you have a hurt, uh, you have a hurt uh, dog, or you have a hurt wild animal, and you, and you back them into a corner, and they're gonna do everything that they can, yep, to stay alive. You know what I'm saying? And that's uh, why, to me, the Republican Party is jaded. The whole yep. establishment, everybody on that stage, could be helping us, and could they're be not. Helping. Right, right. I agree with that, except for. Asia, Asia. I don't know what's wrong with Asia. Ada, <laughs> he's lost. Yeah, I yeah, mean, Ada. Um, and uh, Bergwin, Bergen. Yeah, I never heard of yeah, 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 yeah. He's um, much cut. And Tim Scott, but yeah, um, Suarez is out. I think Larry Elder. I think that you should join him because uh, there's no way that uh, you know what the you know what the next debate the next debate is a Fox News debate too. It's at the Reagan Library. Reagan Library is a Fox News debate, too. And Chris and Christie like, said that's the reason that, that Trump won't go, because he yeah. can't stand to be in the same room or something like that. It's ridiculous. With Fox or Reagan? Reagan. Come on, y'all. He shook, he shook Reagan's hand. I mean, Reagan is his template, if you really want to be honest. Reagan is his yep. template. To make America great again, uh, to make America great again, Reagan said that. Right. If you want to be honest, he has very similar policies to Reagan. He used to be a Democrat, yeah. uh, did a populist movement, America first, union president, right? But did some Reagan, good things, did some bad. I mean, Reagan, Reagan screwed up. Reagan a lot wasn't. Of stuff. Reagan was much more throttled than Trump. Different personalities. Right. Reagan played within the lines. Trump's going outside the lines, and it's that's absolutely. true. That you know what? That's a good. That's a good analogy. Um, and like you said, populist Reagan was populist inside the lines. Trump is a populist with no lines. Mm-hmm. 
And DeSantis is not popular, period. Anytime you can go to a, a place in your own state and they're chanting out the other guy's name, dude, you're out, you're done. You, I mean, stick a fork in it. I mean, I understand. I understand why he's. I understand why he's not going anywhere because that that never back down thing that he thinks that's real. He he really thinks he has a chance. He does, and he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, his wife, his wife Casey, Jill, whatever her name is, she needs to jump on board and say, "Baby, baby, 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 we got to go back home." We got um, tornadoes, hurricanes, and all that stuff. We got insurance. Oh yeah, yeah. People, people losing their insurances. We got, uh, we got racial issues going on down here, uh, and Disney's getting ready to clean our clock. Look, we got to go take care of home, you know, because you can, you can act like Mister Big Dog away from home, but when you get back, you you might not be governor, governor. Period. Last, last thoughts, my friends. Uh, well, I'm going to say, folks, hopefully you've loved the guests that we've had uh, so far this week. Congratulations, Wayne, for knocking down some killer guests. And we've got a bunch more awesome people to talk to. And if anybody in the audience knows somebody super cool, especially MAGA candidates like like Mayor Skaggs, like I really love that interview and I've been retweeting him and and whatnot. Uh, make sure you reach out to us, and we'll be glad to get you get you interesting people. But thanks for tuning in, folks. I'll say welcome to all the new viewers. I see we've got some new viewers on several platforms. Welcome aboard. We're here Monday to Thursday, 12 noon Eastern time. Uh, so DeSantis' wife says, come on, baby, it's time to slow down. Visiting Kiev on the 23rd, Hungarian President Katalin Novak told Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky in Kiev, it's time to sit down at the negotiating table, she said in an interview. Take heed, Zelensky. People need to stop dying. Oh, well, maybe he's part of that DeSantis never back down campaign, too. Fight to the last Ukrainian, baby. Right. It's almost there. <laughs>